Hi, this is your Sabdul Bharti and we are here at KubeCon in CloudRadioCon in Salt Lake City, Utah. And today we have with us Ram Iyengar, Chief Evangelist at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Ram, it's great to have you back on the show. Hi Swapnil, it's always a pleasure to connect with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure to have and it's always exciting to talk to Cloud Foundry folks at KubeCon. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I would, and you folks made some announcement here, so I would talk about announcements later, but before that I just want to talk a bit about, you have booth here, presence here, of course you both are part of the Living Foundation, you know, umbrella, big umbrella. Talk a bit about what kind of discussions, what kind of traffic you're seeing at your booth and the engagement that you're having. In a lot of ways, this KubeCon has turned out very important for us because as Kubernetes has, you know, grown and it's, you know, we're celebrating 10 years of Kubernetes and it's time for Kubernetes to grow up apparently. And we're starting to see conversations around stability and more need and demand for paved paths in the Kubernetes ecosystem. And people who were crazy for like all of these different projects are now coming back and saying, hey, we want our developers to focus, focus on you know, building and shipping stuff as opposed to, you know, trying out the new CNCF project that was released like two weeks ago. So I think that's a welcome change in the attitude overall. We're looking at topics like is Kubernetes enterprise ready the way it is? Uh, we're seeing a lot of booth presence around, you know, enterprise ready Kubernetes and storage and services for Kubernetes and self-service around Kubernetes and all of these different things, you know, we've we've been good at over the years and we're accumulating a community who's you know doing fantastic work in enabling that you know both on kubernetes and non kubernetes infrastructure and so it's interesting to see this community catching up to those problems in a way or rather catching up to the solutions that uh, that we've been focusing on for a few years now did you folks make any announcement here at the show so our big announcement is along the same lines it's about now there being a marketplace for Cloud Foundry that's available. Uh, Cloud Foundry marketplace has always existed in the Cloud Foundry project originally, but there's like the Cloud Foundry for Kubernetes, which we brand called Corifi. And so Cloud Foundry Corifi now supports services while using Kubernetes. So you can enable developer self-service on Kubernetes infrastructure thanks to Cloud Foundry. That's our big story. So whether it's storage, whether it's databases, whether it's message queues and all these other things that developers need for their apps, you have a very simple, straightforward way to create them, bind them, manage their life cycle, et cetera. Can you talk about what was the origin, what is the idea behind Marketplace? Uh, and then of course, if you can just go a bit more details, you know, you just touch upon briefly, but you know. Sure. In terms of the large problems that are still quote unquote unsolved, and I might get into trouble for saying this, but um, it's multi-tenancy, multi-cluster management, and a good way to do self-service for services that you need on Kubernetes. I think the Cloud Foundry community has had historically a good answer for multi-tenancy. The Kubernetes community is coming at it in a bunch of different ways, very characteristic of the cloud native ecosystem. So you can do virtual clusters. There was hierarchical namespaces that we were hearing about a couple of KubeCons ago, but we don't hear as much of it right now. And then there's the Cloud Foundry way of, uh, and I guess the Crossplane and other folks who just create different CRDs and namespaces on demand and assign it to teams and things like that. And we have a solution where we do multi-tenancy by creating namespaces, but we map it to a different Cloud Foundry construct called orgs and spaces, which I think is somewhat elegant. And uh, in that same vein, we are tackling the whole notion of how best to do services. So if you want to enable services on Kubernetes clusters right now, the big question is who decides what database you use? So is it the developer? Is it some ops person? Is it the CTO? Um, is it, you know, somebody else at the company who woke up on the wrong side of the bed and said, you know, this is how we're going to do it. So that's another theme that we're seeing also represented in some projects and products in the booths here. Again, a welcome change. And uh, yeah, we're 
minus the conversation around multi cluster i think these are the two big themes that we're focusing on can you talk a bit about what value what benefit what significance it brings to developer because traditionally kubernetes ecosystem is seen for operators but cloud foundry before you are talking julian also is all about the developer experience and now even at the kubernetes we have started talking about developers talk a bit about the significance the the value it brings to the developers so the developer experience has always been the core promise like you said of cloud foundry the project the ecosystem and all of the people who do wonderful work with the different tools and i think we're carrying on in the same vein right now if you take a, a an example of databases or message queues there's a lot of work that a developer or an ops person has to put in in order for that to become consumable within the context of kubernetes so i think it's a repetition of this paradigm of okay here's application build let's simplify the developer experience around that here's application deployment let's simplify the developer experience around that and so now here's services and service management and service life cycle and let's simplify the developer experience around that so it's definitely continuing in that same vein of tackling kubernetes complexity but for a for you know something that's adjacent to what a developer does with an application who is the ideal target audience for the marketplace so developers who are looking for a simple way to consume services are the best fit there could be like devops personas who also do like some ops workflows but there could also be like pure ops folks or sres who are creating these platforms so i don't know they what they're going by this week so it could be sre it could be platform engineering could be some ninjas in a week or two but some of those folks who whose job it is to enable their developers to consume services can also find a great fit for using the marketplace excellent thank you uh, and how they can get it started it's all open so cloud foundry has always embraced the open source ethos there's a github project for corefi um, you know it will it will help folks get started uh, we have documentation that i know was you know working until two days ago so um, it's uh, it's not very hard to get started on like a local kind cluster with local services and you know just to kick the tires around which i will point out was very hard in the old ways of cloud foundry so we've come a long ways from that and uh, you know i highly encourage people to you know give the github repo a spin and let us know what they like and what they don't and when it comes to open source the beauty of open source is that it solves day one problem very easily it helps el- enables developers to dip their toes and also even organizations they can evaluate technology there's no trial version you know you just get full but then they do want a throat to choke or commercial support so what kind of commercial support do you see around the uh, corefin marketplace so very conveniently we have companies that can work with large organizations a couple of players who can work with like mid size firms and very interestingly this is the year that a few people in the community got started on their own cloud foundry services business so um there is something for everyone in terms of what shape and size you are and so while it might not be as robust as it was 6 or 7 years ago with like a whole cloud foundry ecosystem around it there's a there's a an isv ecosystem that's big enough for you to tap into irrespective of what size you are and what kind of support you're looking for what is next for creepy just give us a hint a teaser like i said multi cluster management still an open problem in kubernetes not a lot of people have figured out how best to tackle it um, the community will be hard at work at tackling multi cluster management we've not necessarily announced like a ga or a 1.0 of creepy so we're going to be moving towards that closing out some of the marketplace gaps um, figuring out you know everything around authorization and uh, um, also perfecting the docker deployments and other workflows uh so next year it will be you know 
anticipated that it will do a 1.0 announcement and we're also trying to position this alongside projects that are adjacent to us like cloud native build packs and that's looking to graduate in a year or so from now and you know we we would like to you know participate in 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 that graduation as much as possible as a foundation because we host paketo which is an implementation of cloud native build packs and so the future is really about stabilizing these new cloud native projects but also I'll point out that a big chunk of work that goes on in the community is cloud foundry on vms or what we call bosch uh, which is you know stable as ever works like a horse and you know makes the makes the light uh, go on in a lot of large enterprise deployments and so we'll continue to maintain and deploy and actively contribute to uh, that project as well. Ram, once again, thank you so much for joining me and of course talk about CloudFundry Market, you know, Kurofi Marketplace. Thanks for great insights and as usual, I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Swapnil. It's a welcome change from looking at you on a small window on the computer, being in person and uh, thanks for accommodating us.